Look at that walleye candy. What's up, folks? This is just a little message to let you know I'm still alive. I did get out fishing this week, but we only caught seven fish after a 40 mile an hour blow day. We squeezed out a couple hours of fishing before dark and it wasn't all that great. And I don't need to show you flicker shads anymore, trolling through weeds. It's kind of getting monotonous, you know. So, quick public service announcement this week. Cruising around the Facebooks the other day and uh, one of our local tools who likes to be a river expert around here was heading out for their first jigging trip of the fall season and he was asking where to get minnows. And if I could say it a thousand times, it wouldn't be enough. You do not need minnows. I'm not trying to put any bait shops out of business. I like my love my local bait shops, you know, but you do not need minnows to fish river walleyes, especially when the water's warm. Uh, the only time I would use them is when the water's 34 or 35 degrees and we're either coming right up on ice or just coming right off of ice, or if I'm ice fishing, then I always have minnows with me and I only use the head or the tail, but that's a little different ball game than what we're talking about September, October, November jigging. When you gain confidence with the plastics, that's what we're going to talk about today, plastics. When you get confidence and you get a big 15 pound box of walleye plastics, you'll you'll start to realize that, you know, I don't know why I'm hauling minnows around. It's it's pretty insane. So that's my public service announcement for the day. I'm just going to take you on a quick tour through my plastics box, show you how I got my stuff laid out, how I store my stuff and what the, you know, what the brands and models of whatever plastics that I basically use for walleyes. This gets me through most of the year right here. This is 99.9% .9 of every plastic that I use throughout the years in here. Here we go. So this Tupperware tub or whatever it is, Walmart tub gets me through uh, the whole year and it stores all my all my walleye plastics it stores them neatly in you know one compartment in the boat and I can pull out what I need for the day or if I'm going in somebody else's boat I can take a, a day bag or something like that but I divide my whole plastic selection for walleye into basically four sections I divide it into worms curly tail grubs minnow tails or you know split tail minnows and paddle tails uh, the paddle tails you might call swim baits bass guys might call them swim baits boot tail minnows whatever I call them paddle tails so that's the box and that's the four categories and how I lay it out and I got cardboard dividers between each section it's not fancy it's not high dollar but it gets the job done for me all right so we're just gonna take a real quick trip through the box and I'll give you a quick inventory of what's in there I might have to hide some colors though I don't know all right, so starting off in the worm section, um, in Michigan we pretty much call these Wyandotte worms. I don't know what they call them everywhere else, just like uh, little spade tail worms or something. Or So these are just like 4-inch worms, uh, your standard Wyandotte stuff, black brown, a lot of Sportsman's Direct fire tail worms. Here's one not a lot of people have, Charlie Brewer slider worms. Super secret sauce right there. Uh, a lot of some walleye 101 deal. I think these are called thump worms. A little bit more body, a little heavier worm, a little thicker. Definitely like those. White Wyandotte worms. That's pretty much the worm section. It's, it's it is what it is. It's flat worms, four inch worms. You use them a lot for walleyes in the spring around here. The second section is going to be curly tail grubs, which don't get a lot of use time, um, except for when you're casting from shore. Usually like a three inch, four inch curly tail grub, you're going to use that right before the spawn, right after the spawn, sort of your shallow river stuff. Um, I'll explain in a minute why I don't use curly tail grubs as much as I probably used to. Um, the majority of most people's boxes around here is going to be your split tail minnows, uh, your straight, straight tail minnow baits. Um, imagine this color right here, does anybody have that? I'm guessing a few people probably do, hopefully you can see that. Yeah. Uh, so you got a lot of finesse, uh, Lunker City minnows, excuse me, Lunker City, a whole lot of Lunker Cities, you got a lot of um, Angler's Choice, Angler's Choice is a really good brand too, they're really nice plastic, um, you know, Blueberry Muffin I think it is, uh, Angler's Choice, that's a favorite. So Angler's Choice, I also put Zoom Flukes and Fluke Juniors in this category here. 
If I have less than four packs of white Fluke Juniors, like I feel naked and I have to go to the store immediately. So that's that. So Lunker City Angler's Choice Zoom, that's pretty much the minnow section in a nutshell. The number one section for me, and this is my pride and joy right here, this section right here, is paddle tails, or you might call them swim baits if you're a, if you're a bass guy. Uh, paddle tails are the whip. They are everything to me. And the reason being is it's, I use them a lot for vertical jigging, but swim baits play a big part all year round when you're casting. They're essentially a crankbait. They work awesome in the fall when you're casting from shore for fish that are on a shad bite feeding real heavily. A swim tail or swim bait is just it's just an awesome bait. You just you gotta use it. Uh, but it also works really good jigging. So you can see I'm kind of partial to the green and chartreuse tails. Don't use that color unless you want to catch fish. Oh, here you go. There you go. Spill the beans right there. So I mean, swim baits, paddle tail minnows. That's that's my bread and butter. I really really like those. Um, gonna start out using those when the water's warmer. They get a little bit more action as the water cools down. You want to kind of tone down the presentation a little bit, a little less flappiness. You're going to go with a straight tail, split, split tail minnow. Um, that's pretty much, and I, you know, I would use a paddle tail nowadays in a lot of situations where you used to throw a curly tail grub, and that's mostly like quarter casting in rivers. These walleye assassins have a fat belly on them. They have a wider profile, which when you're casting and reeling allows them to ride higher in the water and not stay near bottom so much. The, and they, they ride up, they provide you a little bit of, you know, uh, lift so that keeps your presentation moving nicely across the current when you're casting in a river so that's my plastics box let me know you know how you store yours what kind of tricks you got for organizing your plastics and yeah I'll see you next week thanks for watching